So the full EAFC 25 database has been leaked. So in today's video, we're going to be going through the most meta cards, we're going to be going through new players, and we're going to be talking about who will be really good investments once EAFC 25 comes around. So between now and the 6th of October, I'm going to be uploading a daily free EAFC 25 trading guide. This will include everything to do on the web app to make as many coins as possible with both trading and investing. I'll be talking about the full release, what we expect to see regarding the market. And there'll also be a daily updated investing guide all in there, updated every day for free. No gimmicks whatsoever. All you gotta do is click on the Google Docs link on the top link of the description. So in today's video, what we are gonna be doing is we are gonna be looking at the first, look, well, the first showing of the brand new EAFC 25 database. The whole database has leaked. Every single player, I think there's about 6,000 players or something like that, that have been leaked everywhere from bronzes to silvers to golds. And in today's video, what we're doing is we're gonna be looking through some most popular players. We're gonna be talking about the stat changes. We're gonna be talking about, is there any obvious sort of metas that seem to be showing? And we're gonna be talking about prices of players uh, and also talking a little bit about investment. So I do have a collection of players. I'm gonna start off with a few of the top end meta cards, because it's always interesting seeing, you know, how are the uh, very popular cards that are probably sticking to your team for a while, have they changed from last year to this year. Talk a little bit about the pricing. Then we'll move on to some new sort of meta cards, who's had nice upgrades and now is gonna become slightly more expensive players and more meta. And finally, we end off talking about some of the uh, brand new players in FIFA and what I think will happen with them. So the first player we are going to be talking about, because I've got my notes here, is going to be Mbappe. So if I can go and find myself the Mbappe card. Now, sadly, they don't actually have a, um, a website for all of this. Uh, it would have been great if we just had a website. We could easily go from player to player. But the people who leak the database only have an iOS and an Android uh, app. So I'm not quite sure why they've done that. I don't know if that's because it's easy to monetize that or something. But... Yeah, so do bear in mind, uh, bear with, with me switching the players. So the first player we are going to be going through is Mbappe. No changes to the skill moves for the weak feet. He's got the exact same playstyle as last year, or playstyle plus as last year. Uh, sadly, not all the players have playstyle pluses in terms of being leaked, but uh, Mbappe does because he is one of the top players. So the interesting thing for Mbappe is he has zero face stat changes and zero in-game stat changes. As in, his pace is exactly the same. His shooting is exactly the same. And now, I would have been a little bit worried if all the cards had this, but actually, there's loads and loads of stat changes amongst the cards. So it's not a case of, like, you know, these aren't leaks and people are just throwing in last year's stats. So they, they do seem to be new. Uh, there's a few interesting things to talk about in terms of, obviously, Mbappe has gone from PSG to Real Madrid. And that really does improve his meta links a lot more. Yeah, PSG had players such as Marquinhos, they had Hakimi, which I think is probably one of the most meta out there. And they had Dembele, who again we'll actually talk about later in the video. But his links just aren't as good as Real Madrid. Real Madrid was a lot more of a sort of solid back line um, with, you know, a few sporadic players other than that. Uh, and on top of that, obviously, he does go and get himself them French La Liga links. Perfect links, obviously, with Mendy. Strong links to Griezmann. Strong link to Conde, if that's uh, overly desirable. But yeah, his links are definitely stronger, and that's going to increase his price uh, compared to what it was last year. There's also some things that will also increase his price compared to last year, such as, well, obviously it's subjective how it does, but last year he got a POTM in the first month of FIFA. And obviously if you got a POTM in the first month of FIFA, that's going to create a fair bit of panic when the voting comes around and then the anticipation around the SBC. And as a result, you know, that allowed him to drop a little bit faster than uh, this year. On top of that, one thing that works in the favour of him rising is he actually got a promo card in the second week. He got himself a Trailblazer promo card, which went and rose him. So last year, he was 3.2 million for the first two weeks of FIFA. And then after that, he dropped. Very interesting enough, he actually dropped one week before he got his promo card, and then obviously his gold card went out of packs. Um, now again, this probably would have been down to... Uh, what's it called the first weekend league starting I believe in the first week of October and you know everyone was hyping him up you know getting him for the first weekend league as you do a 3.2 million coin card um, and then the demand kind of dropped off and the supply kind of caught up with the demand as a result dropping him from then onwards uh, and then on top of that I would probably put a lot of it down to people panicking about the POTM because of course in the past uh, we've had some POTMs that have been relatively cheap compared to gold cards and promo cards and as a result, drop those gold cards and promo cards. But enough with that. How much do I think Mbappe is going to be? Well, again, two, he was 3.2 million last year. I think if you're lucky, you see him down at 3.5 million. If not, 4.5 million. What are the things that would allow him to be cheaper than 4.5 million? Other top-end cards just being decent. 
I mean, we've already seen the icons and heroes, and I'll be honest, with you, they're as good as any other year, really. Obviously, you've got likes of Bale new in this year, and I think that's a super solid card. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's going to be an insane amount of you know top end cards like Mbappe that are new in the game that are going to allow him to be much cheaper than you know 3.5 to 4.5 million. So again, he should hold his uh, price for two weeks and then go down. Uh, weirdly enough, last year he actually was a really good investment. Uh, he went from 2.2 million to 3.2 million in a week, which is crazy because these top end cards normally aren't that good of an investment because. Uh, normally the supply and the demand is quite equal, but yeah, last year the supply was significantly cheaper for the, I think it was the first three, four days, and then uh, then as I say, he did rise. But I'd say that is about it. Again, it's, maybe it comes down a little bit down to meta. I can't see how a 97 pace, a 90 shooting, and a 92 dribbling card doesn't end up being meta, but again, that would be the other thing that would change it. Now moving on to a card that's a little bit cheaper if we can go and find him through my ranks of players and that is going to be Virgil van Dijk. Now the reason I've got you Virgil van Dijk is because Virgil van Dijk was in fact the most used goal card throughout the whole year and you know, I, I don't think that's too much of a surprise. Obviously, you know, yeah, his, his base card was very, very good. So what are the changes to van Dijk whatsoever? Um, there aren't any changes. I think he actually has the exactly same, exact same face card as he does the face card last year. I think he had a few changes with uh, plus one or two in-game stats, but yeah, his pace, shooting, passing, dribbling, defending, and physicality is the exact same as last year. Obviously, there's a few things that can be a little bit different to last year. Uh, I don't think there's been a crazy amount of transfers regarding Liverpool, but the thing that may be different to last year is we've got, obviously, players like Jap Stam. We've got our staff players like Saliba getting a nice big upgrade. We've got Van der Ven getting a big upgrade, but I don't think he'll affect it. So it's maybe not so much Van Dijk that's going to be... Um, what's going to change his price and more what around Van Dijk is going to be affecting. I think someone like Marquinhos is uh, due a downgrade. So uh, again, there's probably a few top end cards that have been dropped. Other notes I do have about uh, Van Dijk is that he actually was a great investment. Uh, I believe he went up around about 100k in a week last year. And I mean, the reason he's a great investment is because there's a few a few things you want to look for investing if you, you know, just don't even want to put much effort in. All you got to look for is French or Pro. And French Prem is, is always a beautiful combo. But obviously, Van Dijk, top end player in the Prem, always does really, really well as an investment. Regarding his price, he rose all the way up until Ultimate Edition came out. And then when Ultimate Edition came out, he did, did go and drop. I believe then having his next rebound would have been for the first weekend league. Now, the interesting thing about Van Dijk is, and personally, I, I didn't actually remember him being this cheap. He was actually only 300k on the release. Now, it might be one thing stopping him maybe being too much more is that he's a defender. Is not it's not as uh, it's not as pleasing spending all your money on a defender and then having a, a pleb up front rather than obviously spending a lot of money on the attacker and then having a pleb in defence. It's just personally for me, it's a lot more fun spending your money where the uh, where more fun is on the pitch rather than just having an AI that can block a little bit better. But yeah, it was 300k, and I don't even say 300k was quite expensive for him because we uh, we had his Mad Foot card. If you don't remember, at the beginning of last year, we had that Night promo, which gave us promo cards that had no upgrade whatsoever. Well, that meant that Van Dyke was out of packs, actually, for around about four or five days, and he was 300k, meaning next year, or EFC 25, he's probably only going to be around about 200k from the release, anywhere from 200 to 250. Uh, and again, we do expect him peaking in the first few days, and then it'll just drop and drop and drop. I think by the time we get for the first week in league, it'll be about 150k, uh, which is... You know, a little bit worrying, but I mean, those were the trends last year, and again, there was stuff that didn't work in his favour. So, he had a great rise from, uh, and again, this is for basically all Premier League players, a great rise from the web app release all the way through to the Ultimate Edition, peaked in the Ultimate Edition, and then went down. So, that is uh, Van Dyke. But yeah, so a lot of players did drop with the full release. Next player we're going to move on to is not going to be Hernandez. You can have Hernandez in a second. The next one we're going to move on to is going to be Dembele. If we can go and find Dembele. There we go. So Dembele obviously lost his compadre of uh, Mbappe this year. And he also lost a few other things. He got himself minus one pace. Uh, and that pace was lost in sprint speed. He got himself a minus two sprint speed. He also got minus two shooting. Now leaving an 86 rated attack with 75 shooting. Making Raheem Sterling look like Erland uh, Haaland. Well yeah, minus two shooting. Uh, nothing too substantial there. I think he got himself minus three. Finishing was the most, uh, you know, I guess notable change there. He got himself plus one passing. Uh, he got himself plus one dribbling. 
uh, which actually came in the form of plus four agility, which was nice. And then there was some really random one where they didn't change his defending whatsoever, but they just gave him plus 12 standing tackle. Uh, and then there was no change to physical. Now, regarding the stuff that's working in favour and not in favour of Dembele, obviously he lost that Mbappe link. Uh, Dembele actually was, I think, around about 280k from the release. Now, how much of that do you want to credit down to Mbappe? You know, is uh, is up for question. But one of the most, well, one of the most, uh, I guess, common reasons on why Dembele is expensive is he is just the best French right winger in the game. Uh, now, obviously, like I said earlier, France really popular, Prem really popular. But where the French you know, have, let's say, loads of attackers, they've got loads of centre-backs, where they don't really have many is right wingers. Your options are Diaby, who's actually received a downgrade to a 83, and I believe he's head off to the Saudi League. We then have Diani, who's held her card, and Komen, who's held her card. But last year, the Diani and Komen uh, weren't actually more desirable as Dembele, being generally about a fifth or a sixth of his price. So... Basically, it is going to be going to come down to Dembele has received that shooting downgrade. He has received a uh, pace downgrade. But in the reality, are Komen and Diani going to be as demanded as him? You know, if they are going to be demanded on him, we're going to see that 280k come down a fair bit more. If they're not, even with a downgraded card, he still might be the best of a bad bunch as such. Uh, my prediction is he'll be about 200k. Uh, I do think we will see him down about 20-30%. Just because I think the Mbappe links definitely uh, kill off a lot of demand. Um, and as I say, other than that, he's just the best French, French right wing. Also, Colo Muniain, who we're going to be going for in a sec, uh, who I also can't pronounce, has also received a downgrade. Now, Colo was 50k and he was 280k, so he's not, you know, 100 the same sort of uh, teams, but that was another thing. Uh, in my notes, I've got down that I think that basically it'll be dependent on how good the French Liga League and women are. We've already seen, I think, Kachawi got a downgrade, Batra, I think, also got a downgrade. So, uh, yeah, the demand for the French League and Women is down. I also think the demand for Dembele will also be down with, again, Diani both being actually a replacement for him and being a uh, link investment. So that is all we have about Dembele. Now moving on to a Frenchman who actually has received an upgrade, and that is Hernandez. Now, Hernandez has received a very, very juicy upgrade. So, he got himself a plus two rating. That doesn't do anything. But he's got himself plus two pace. Um, we then move on to shooting, and he's got himself plus 14 volleys, which is a bit of a weird one, and plus 25 uh, penalties. So I, I think his shooting received a plus one or two in general, but yeah, they kind of upgraded stuff that wasn't that desirable. I think he got himself like plus ones and twos here, but the vast majority of the upgrade, I mean, he's had what, plus 39 in-game stats on ugly two stats that no one really cares about. He got himself plus two passing. Sadly, with this, again, the same sort of thing. Now, I've seen they've done this a fair bit to a fair few players, is they've increased the passing. You think, oh, that's brilliant. You know, long passing, short passing. But that increase in passing literally just came for, to free kick accuracy and curve. Now, curve is obviously good on, like, whip corners and, you know, crosses and so on. But, yeah, I mean, he received himself a plus 11 free kick accuracy. So there seems to be a bit of a facade in both actually shooting and passing, where they just increase the penalties and the free kick accuracy and the curve, which again are more for set pieces than in game. And as someone who literally passes all my set pieces off, I don't know, it just seems to be a bit of a useless upgrade for me. But yeah, got himself a big curve and free kick. Regarding dribbling, got himself a plus three in the dribbling, got himself a plus three in defending, and got himself plus five in physicality. Now, there was an interesting thing about his increase in physicality is that they increase his jumping, which was already 90 to 95. Now, have they increased the jumping? Because I haven't seen this across the board on defenders. Obviously, they didn't increase Van Dyke, and again, we'll cover more defenders a bit. But have they increased his jumping because people were literally playing Josselu, um, what is it called? Showdown card at right back. So then, you know, you're not going to have to use these Josselus if these fullbacks have really high jumping. Because, of course, we have back post crosses, but. All the fullbacks were either too small or their jumping wasn't good enough. So, because we haven't seen a... Of the players I've looked at, we haven't seen a hit on the jumping on attackers. Because obviously, I guess if the attackers had lower jumping and heading accuracy, it nerfed the whole back post, head it down sort of meta. But what they have done is they have gone and juiced up the jumping here, which again would counter a little bit of meta. So that's something interesting to see right there, that, that kind of counters uh, last year's meta a little bit. Uh, last year, what happened? To, oh, he also received himself plus seven strength, which is you know pretty pretty decent. Ends up with an amazing card. So last year he was 200k. He was also a great investment, had a great rise. Why? Because he was a French player. 
Um, Mendy has actually received an upgrade as well. Uh, I think he's received a plus two on his rating last year, so obviously that's his main competition when it comes to French left backs. But yeah, so he's 200k last year. I do think that he can easily be like 250 to 300k this year. Um, yeah, he should be the best left back. Now, his, his links aren't too amazing. Uh, obviously, AC Milan, you're mainly looking at what? Tomori, Mianganong, and um, the likes of Raphael Liao. But yeah, I do think he can be a very, very expensive card. Uh, again, unless unless Mendy just has the classic, has worse stats, but seems to outperform. Uh, as long as people can get Theo Hernandez in his team, yeah, again. I think he was about mid to mid hundreds to high to near 200 last year. And I think it'll be around about 200 to 250k this year. So that is some top end cards covered. Now let's go and move to some of the cheaper cards. So the first one we're going to go and cover is going to be Colo Munoin. I'm going to move on to Colo Munoin. Uh, and yeah, as I he's going to be in the, I guess, the uh, the bracket of cheap meta cards. But he's received himself a bit of a downgrade. He's got minus two rating. He's got himself minus one pace uh, with, I believe, minus one sprint speed. He's got himself plus two shooting. And you think, oh, that's great. Until you realise that's basically all just come in the form of plus five long shots, which I don't really know how desirable it is on your, uh, you know, your holding striker. We then got minus two passing, uh, but even though he's got himself minus two passing, he has got himself plus eight free kick. Again, another just why, why they're increasing free kicks on so many of these players. Um, we then get to a minus five dribbling, which is pretty rough. He gets himself minus 10 balance, minus 4 ball control, minus 6 dribbling, and minus 7 composure. Which is rough, I'm not going to lie. Now, you don't really have too many options when it comes to French strikers, and we'll cover this a little bit when it comes to pricing. But yeah, that is a pretty heavy nerf on arguably one of the better uh, bottom to mid-range French strikers. Now, last year he came in at 50k. Um, but yeah, so I, I do think he should be cheaper this year, being low rating. He should also drop off a lot, lot faster. He did peak pre-Ultimate Edition. So, again, Ultimate Edition came out on the 27th, which he just dropped and dropped and dropped. Mainly because, again, the low rating meant he was very easy to be packed. Um, unlike someone like Griezmann, who, again, might have only been about 30, 40k more. But due to him being high rated, he was harder to pack. Uh, and as a result, you didn't see him drop as much. But, yeah, uh, a decrease in the card really comes down to how good are his other low-end sort of competition. The low-end competition, you're looking at Ben Yedda, you're looking at Cambi and Cuckoo, uh, and again, Diani, depending on her price and the course, depending on Griezmann. I think he should receive a minus 10 to 20k, so he was 50k last year, I think he should be around about 30 to 40k. But, uh, of course, it depends on Ben Yedda, because I also think he's off to Qatar or something like that. So if there's no Ben Yedda, then, you know, he might come out as the best French league and striker. But, yeah, receive a bit of a downgrade, should peak before Ultimate, Team, Ultimate Edition comes out. But there we go, Colo Munoi. The next player we, or the uh, penultimate meta player that we are going to end this off with, is going to be Mr. Van der Ven, if we can go and find him. There we go, Van der Ven. He's actually received a really nice upgrade. So Van der Ven was 80, 78 rating, so he's received a plus 4 rating. He's received a plus 3 pace with 4 acceleration and 2 sprint speed. Very nice. He has received a minus 4 shooting, but I uh, don't imagine you were too fast. He has received a plus five passing, but despite a plus five passing, he's got minus nine vision, but plus eight short passing. Now, this is quite interesting because, of course, last year there was the meta of just using, I mean, it was more so your fullbacks, but there was a meta of just pinging it between from your centre back out wide. So what they've done is they've increased the short passing, but basically with the minus nine vision, decreased the long passing. So is this now to counter the second meta, I guess, of just pinging it from your left back to your right winger? Uh, and so on and so on again. It was less over your centre backs, but increasing short passing and decreasing vision definitely, uh, you know, definitely seems to be kind of nerfing that sort of meta to an extent. Got himself plus four defending with plus one physical, uh, and that kind of run, rounds off his card. Now he was 19k last year. Um, he peaked one day earlier than a lot of the other cards. A lot of cards peaked on the 26th, one day pro ultimate edition. He peaked on the 25th last year because again he was 78 rating. Now. Probably peaks one day before Ultimate Edition this year, so again the 26th, um, because he's now got a plus four on his card. It's definitely more desirable than uh, last year of basically you know, increases across the board. I'd say it'd be about 40 to 60k when the game comes out. Uh, I'd say this of the prediction of Saliba last year. Saliba was coming around about 40 to 60k. Definitely didn't have as good of a card, but he was French. You know, Saliba having French trade off with probably Van der Ven having a slightly better card. You know. Uh, I think, I think it's a fair, uh, fair sort of prediction. 
Uh, regarding him being an investment, uh, Van der Ven should be a really good investment. Uh, again, the problem he had last year, and again, he seemed to be a decent investment last year, was that he crashed a day earlier than everyone else. But, I say, due to him being high rating, having high supply should be a really good investment and should see him rise between the web app and the ultimate edition. But that is going to go and uh, wrap up the meta players. We're now going to go and cover one last player, and that is going to be Mr. Yamal. Uh, now, this is because he's a new player. I'll be honest with you, I don't think he's meta whatsoever. He hasn't got the worst card. Bear in mind, he's probably about half my age. But um, yeah, 82 pace with an okay split. Uh, 82 dribbling with decent agility, dribbling, ball control. Three star, four star skills, three star weak foot. I mean, it's a meh card, but I just don't see why he'd hold value. He's not very high rated. He probably, again, has multiple better cards. Someone like Anaki Williams or even maybe Nico Williams are probably going to have like better cards than this guy. And they'll also be basically this guy. So I was comparing him to the price of Alicia Lehman last year, right? Because Alicia Lehman had a lot of height, but then died off very early. There was another player I was comparing him to, which was Dominic Salobsai, who actually was 10k on the release, but dropped to about 2k in about four days. Because the reality is, is people think they want these cards, but they don't really want these cards. And these cards are getting packed loads, which means these cards are the most prone to crashing. Um... I think the only way he really wouldn't crash is if he fit an Evo. If he fit an Evo early on, there'd be so much hype around him because, of course, he's probably the, you know, the, the general demographic of people who play FIFA and they think that's really cool and obviously he's a young hype sort of player. But yeah, if he doesn't fit an Evo, then I don't see the, uh, the demand keeping up with the supply with him being an 81 rated unless they decide to do something crazy with his pack weight. But if you look at that card, there's no reason for them to do anything crazy with the pack weight. So again, he might be 5 to 10k on the release, but he'll go and hit 1 2k about 3 4 days later. He's the worst sort of card to basically have if you want to maintain your coins. But that is going to go and wrap up that video. Hopefully it's given you guys a little insight into how your players are and it's given a little insight to what sort of upgrades, downgrades and again how EA seems to be nerfing uh, last year's meta, which is always interesting because it's a bit more of a different game. But thank you very much for watching and we'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video.